No? Are we on? Testing, testing, testing. Are we there? Are we there? Hey, welcome to Patchabilities. I am so glad you dropped by today. I am, I am Julie Werzer. I'm your host and uh, I'm the creative energy behind Patchabilities Patterns because I love creating small, uh, small um, quilted mini projects, mini quilt projects uh, for your home that you can finish in one day. Uh, and hopefully I make them uh, so that they're inviting to everybody, beginners and novices alike, into our wonderful hobby of quilting. All right, intro out of the way. So as the title of this post says, um, what does my design process look like? I get this question all the time. Julie, how do you come up with your ideas? What does your design process look like? So today, I'm going to share that. I'm going to bring you in and, and give you a little bit of insight. Obviously, you can't go follow me around all day long to get the whole spiel, but I can give you a delightful uh, peek into how I make things happen. So because the gnomes are a big deal and they're fresh right now, and I've just released out three different gnome patterns just in the past couple of months, I thought I would use those as my example. So here we go. So um, I'm gonna start behind me here on my design wall are three my three latest gnome runner patterns. If you're not into gnomes, just be delighted by the design process anyway. But the very top one here, I did this gnome runner for winter and, uh, you know, buffalo check is in. So I came up with that design and I wanted to show you, I just, like, people had been asking, asking, asking for gnomes. And so I said, all right, all right, all right. Gnomes aren't my thing, but I know that they are, they, people love them. So I sat down and I sketched out the end of a winter gnome runner and this is exactly what that sketch was um, you can see all my notes and scribbles so first I design I get a big piece of paper and I sketch out in pencil what I think I want my design to be and then once I get my pencil design all my shapes everything's positioned the way I I want it to look then I go over my final lines with a sharpie marker yes no sharpie is not sponsoring this episode today but maybe they should um but uh, so i go over all of my lines in sharpie and so then i get my overall design like this then i take this pencil drawing i bebop down to mary stitchens which is my mom's quilt shop down in jessup iowa and if you haven't been there you better get your buns there or at least hop on her website so i go in there I pick the fabrics that I want for this when for this model. Up here, this is this was my this is the final result. I just uh, generally I pick a shape or I run around the quilt shop and I find one fabric that just I don't know jumps out of the bolts at me and says use me use me. Um, and I kind of go from there and then I build my fabrics generally from that one. Now on this one here, I can tell you, I loved the new sparkle grunge by Moda. Love that fabric line. And so I so badly wanted to use that green sparkle and then the Buffalo, uh, plaid Buffalo checks were, I, yeah, just felt like I had to use them too. So that's how that little cutie came to be. And because I did a winter one and it sold like hotcakes, I obviously had to follow that up immediately with a the next season, right? Which was Valentine's Day. Put him back up there. And so that's how I came up with the Valentine's Day runner was I took, I wanted it to be the same size because so many of you love the winter gnome that it should be the same size. So I did up a Valentine's Day I don't have the sketches to show you of that one, but I do have the sketches to show you of the latest one. So the very last one that I did here, which I just released out to you all last week, was the Lucky Gnome You Are, the March Runner. So I'll unpin this and show you. So 
I'm going to show you quickly the... Here is the black and white sketch. Here's the pencil drawing with the Sharpie over the top of it. This is what the design started out to be. And you can see the runner to see what it ended up to be. Now there are a lot of steps in the meantime to get from here to here. Um, none of which we have time for on a quick little five minute video. Um, but I will tell you once, once I do have a design all sketched out and drawn and I typically go pick my fabrics is step two and then I come back home and I trace out all of my shapes. I trace them all out individually on a sheet of paper and then I sprinkle a little fairy dust on it and shake my butt and um, poof uh, it ends up boom coming out like this. <laughs> um, this is the final pattern and inside of this pattern uh, your shape pages or your template sheets um, get a lovely makeover and um, they end up looking like this and this would be one of the final template sheets that are in your pattern. So um, yeah, it really kind of is that simple. There's a lot of technical steps um, in between, but um, this is really how I get my ideas. Uh, generally one idea, um, it's like somebody puts fertilizer on it, right? And one idea generally sparks and creates many, many, many more. And um, that's how it works. I just hop on the creative brain train and go. So um, that's a quick little insight here into how a design is born and, and comes to be. I really hope that you enjoyed watching this. Um, I think this is a really great place for us to land today. And if you like this video, please share, please like it, please subscribe to it, and um, don't be a stranger. And until next time, we'll see you. Keep on stitching.